questions, and today we're going to cover our canopy fabric awnings. It's not a product that's a high volume product by any means, but it still holds a place in the overall category of awnings. And with, I guess, some of the more modern colours and takes on fabrics, still something that can look quite good in the right application. So canopy fabric awnings are a fixed awning with a fabric covering applied over a 45 millimetre aluminium skeletal frame, I guess for wants of better words. Now they can be situated over windows, doors, they can be used to cover walkways and they can provide great weather and certainly sun protection. The frame components are made from rust-free extruded and die-cast aluminium and all plastic components and the rubber stripping are UV stabilised. Now, the canopy awning styles are only available in a fixed option. Many years ago, we had ones that could retract and fold back. They're no longer part of the range, and they're always in a fixed position. And what we've got here is some, I guess, small hand samples, some large awnings that would almost suit a normal doorway. Here to have a look at today to talk through some of the things that you need to be aware of and hopefully make the product something that's not as scary and too confusing for people if they get the, re, uh, the request to talk about it. So in our price book, you see a product broken into four categories. Type one, which are the main style of awnings in the price list. First one is rectangular. Now, what we've got here is a sample of a rectangular awning. It's, looking at the back of it, it's essentially a rectangle. It has a 10 millimeter, what we call radius squared corner. And I'll just show you that maybe a little bit closer so you can see. It's actually a die cast aluminium insert holding the corner pieces coming together, finishing it off in a very rectangular format. So it's a very small 10 millimeter radius corner. That's just called a rectangular canopy awning. The next style is the boulevard. Now, boulevard still has straight edge across the front as the rectangular, so you can see straight edge across there, but it has a bigger 300 millimeter radius aluminium formed corner. I might just turn that one around rather than pick it up and you'll, you'll see what I mean there. So you can see the internal framework there. It's all beautifully formed curved aluminium. There's your 45 millimeter structure, the frame that actually we use on all of the canopy awnings. And it's a 300 millimeter, nice smooth curve. But as I said, has straight edge. So it's curved straight and then curved at the other end. They're the two probably most popular awnings. Moving and staying within type one, we move across to what we refer to as cupola. Now, the cupola awning is half round, where the drop and the projection are the same. As I said, you can see there by the side of that awning, the drop and the projection are the same. That's the cupola. We move to what's referred to as elliptical. Now here, this uses any other radius corner with any drop and projection combination. It's a continuous curve. There's no straight bit in there at all. It is a true elliptical shape. And then you move into other shapes that are available. Usually these are price on application. You can have a wedge. Now a wedge canopy probably is maybe the more modern style looking awning when you look at what the awnings are. But again, same frame structure. This has got the rectangular look. So it has that 10 millimeter corner, which is almost perfectly a 90 degree corner. In a nutshell, they're the key awnings that you would be selling if you're selling canopies. You would order the overall size viewed from outside of the building looking in. Now the drop. The drop, I'll just grab this awning here. When you order the drop, the drop is to the bottom of the frame, from there to there. 
you can call up Valance. It's your choice whether you want to have the Valance or not have the Valance. And the Valance will add additional to the drop. In commercial applications, be mindful of head clearance. Commercially, you're usually going to have to work with a minimum height or, or maximum or minimum clearance, I should say, of 2300. It's still worthwhile checking council regulations depending on the area that you're in. 2300 should be fine. In domestic applications, we work on a minimum head clearance of two metres. So you're OK up to two metres in um, those domestic applications. Some measuring tips. If the drop and projection are not going to be equal, then the drop must be half of the projection or greater. Now, what that means if, if I want to have a metre projection, can't have the drop less than 500. It's got to be 500 or more. Be wary of striped fabrics. When you look at striped fabrics, you must make sure that the awning style you're selling has the same drop and the same projection. The actual line or the patterns will not line up unless we have a completely symmetrical canopy awning. So here what we're sharing, those measuring tips, you can see drop obviously is your wall drop, projection is your projection. Wherever possible, our recommendation is make the drop and projection the same. And obviously the width is the width. Now, we're going to share another little picture with you here, which is talking about a barrel infill. If you've got a canopy where the drop is going to be much less than the projection required, you can order a standard canopy with same drop, same projection, and you can see the little line drawing here, which has what we call a rectangular barrel infill, which sits behind it and will actually build that awning out. So you would give... Obviously, the first canopy, the same drop and projection. And then you give the drop and projection of the barrel. Now, you'd give those as two different sets of measurements, but it would come to you as one complete awning. That then gives you the ability to project out that little bit further. When it comes to fitting the awning, architrave fit, obviously, you're going to give us the width and you're not going to take any deductions. You're going to mount to the architrave. In that scenario, We'd recommend on Architrave that you probably used or sold an awning like the rectangular, which had the 10 millimeter radius square corners. And the reason for that is if you chose an awning with a 300 millimeter radius arm or an elliptical shape, you wouldn't be cutting out the light or the weather as much as you can with the rectangular. When you fit into a brick wall, again, you can use the 10 mil radius or the 300 millimeter boulevard corners as we sort of know them, but you'd add a minimum of 300 millimeters again to give you that coverage. Your projection and drop are as you require, but we're just recommending you add on more to the width wherever possible if you're mounting on a flat wall or a brickwork scenario. Now, there are some size limitations and you should refer to your price grids to have a look at that. When you go through the different types in the price book, type one are going to be the key style of canopies that you're going to sell. If you've got types two, three, or four, I'm going to suggest you pick up the phone and you talk to Trevor or myself or tech help in our office. They are price on application awnings. They are quite rare. The awnings that you see here today are going to cover most canopy options that you'll ever come across. Installing a canopy, guys, it really couldn't be much easier. You've ordered the awning, you're out on site, you're fitting it. You're going to check the awning width in relation to the opening that we're covering. You want to establish how much overlap has been allowed each side. So applying that same overlap to the top of the awning, you're going to fix two mounting brackets. Let me show you what those mounting brackets look like here. Very straightforward, basically hook type brackets that you would fit either with diner bolts if you're going into, going into concrete, you're going into brick, or obviously wood screws if we're into timber. So you're going to mount two of these initially at no more than 500 millimetres 
either side of the vertical centre line. So essentially you don't want them to be more than one metre apart. So with those in position, you'd lift the canopy up and you'd hook it on. You'd then tighten those two mounting brackets to hold that awning firmly, whilst you fit the remaining brackets, again at intervals not exceeding one metre. And then you'd fix the bottom wall mounting bracket in the same manner. Really, the last thing you're going to do there, if you've got this awning on a wall or on a flat surface, you might want to seal it off. So you're going to apply some sealant between the wall and the PVC profile insert that's at the back of that canopy awning. And this will just prevent water running down the face of the wall behind the awning. Obviously, wipe off any surplus sealant, clear it off, and you finish the job. So you can see there, just recommending some sealant goes behind. Maximum. 500 to the left of the centre line, 500 to the right of the centre line, put the awning up, fix the other fixings. Pretty simple, straightforward awning. Now, these awnings come completely assembled. So from an assembly point of view of the awning, there isn't any. It will come to you as a completed canopy. So keep in mind, it can be a larger item, sometimes a little bit harder to transport and probably prone to freight damage. Something just to keep in mind with canopies. That's the end of the session, guys. Canopies is not a complicated, difficult product. The five samples that we have here, in fact, really the four samples we have here from Rectangular, Boulevard, Coppola and Elliptical, in type one in the price book, are going to cover most canopy situations or inquiries you're going to get. Right? I didn't mention fabrics, and I, I, I probably should have. Canvas, acrylic, screen fabric, all available on the range of canopies, obviously our standard Hunter Douglas canvases, our Everscreen fabric, and obviously the Dixon fabric, all standard on canopies. All right, guys, thanks for your time. See you again next time round. Cheers.